Number 10. Why your body sometimes tries to kill you. You'd think your body has your back. It's you. Its whole job is to keep you alive, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it treats harmless stuff, like peanuts, sunlight, or your own skin, like it's poison. One second you're eating a cookie. The next, your immune system goes full attack mode. It's not a bug. It's called autoimmunity. Millions of people live with it every day. Your body builds defenses to protect you, then forgets to stop. It can't tell friend from enemy, so it attacks both. Allergies work the same way. Pollen, cat hair, totally safe. But your body sees a threat and hits the alarm. Sneezing, swelling, closing throat. And here's the wild part. There's no real danger. Your body just decided there was. It's like a guard dog that bites the mailman, the neighbor, and then you. So yes, your body mostly wants to help. But sometimes, it turns on you. And the scariest part? You won't know until it's already happening. Number 9. Why your brain can lie to itself and believe it. Your brain doesn't just lie to you. It tells the lie and believes it. You remember things that never happened. You're sure someone said something they didn't. You forget why you walked into a room so your brain makes up a reason, and it feels real. This isn't a glitch, it's how your brain works. It hates not knowing. So when there's a gap, it fills it, quickly, sloppily, and with full confidence. That's how false memories form. Imaginary arguments, made-up details that feel solid. There's even a name for it, confabulation. It's when your brain invents a story and forgets its fiction. To you, it feels like memory. Some people believe their loved ones are imposters. Others recall vivid scenes from lives they never lived. But most of the time, it's quiet. Little lies. Tiny edits. Gaps you never notice. And that's the scary part. You won't feel the difference. Your brain doesn't care if it's real. It just needs the story to work. And if it fits, you'll believe it. Number 8. Why some people just disappear without a trace. One minute, they're there. The next, gone. No struggle. No note. No sound. Just a person missing and nothing to explain it. It happens more often than you think. People vanish during errands, on highways, even from locked homes. No clues, no suspects, no body. Sometimes it's a crime. Sometimes a secret escape. But sometimes it makes no sense at all. There are cases with witnesses. Someone sees them turn a corner, but they never come back. Security footage shows them walk in, but never walk out. No signs of pain. No history of illness. Just silence. And science? It's out of ideas. Maybe memory failed. Maybe tech glitched. But sometimes everything checks out and they're still gone. So where do they go? Do they fall through something we don't understand? Trigger something we can't detect? Step outside what we call real? Because the scariest part isn't that people disappear. It's that sometimes they disappear perfectly, without reason, without a trace, without a goodbye. Number seven, why you laugh when you shouldn't. You're at a funeral. The air is heavy. Then someone snorts. A giggle escapes. And suddenly you're biting your lip, fighting off a laugh you didn't ask for. Why now? Why would your brain choose this moment? It's called incongruous affect, when your emotions don't match the moment. Not because you're heartless, but because your brain is overwhelmed. Tension builds, grief tightens the room, and laughter slips in like a pressure valve hissing open. You're not laughing because it's funny. You're laughing because your brain doesn't know what else to do. It happens when we're scared, shocked, hurt. Laughter isn't always joy. Sometimes it's just noise, a signal that something's too big to process. Kids laugh when they fall. Adults laugh when they lie or get caught or feel trapped. Laughter covers pain, or fear, or panic. So if you've ever laughed at the wrong time, you're not broken. You're coping. Because sometimes laughter isn't about jokes. It's about staying sane. Number six, why you randomly forget what you were just doing. You walk into a room and freeze. Wait, why did you come in here? You stare at the wall like it owes you an answer. But your brain's already moved on. This isn't just you. It happens to everyone, constantly. It's called the doorway effect. And no, it's not brain failure. It's your brain doing exactly what it's designed to do. When you enter a new space, your brain treats it like a new chapter. Different room, different goal. So it wipes the last mental task, even if it was just seconds ago. Your brain loves context. Change the context, and it assumes the mission changed, too. That old task? Gone. Like closing a tab you still needed. It can happen mid-scroll, mid-sentence, or mid-thought. Sometimes all it takes is a blinking light, a sudden sound, or a passing distraction. It's not that you forgot. It's that your brain resorted and misfiled the moment. So no, you're not broken. Your brain is just too good at cleaning up. Sometimes a little too good. Number five, why your body has memories your mind doesn't. You touch a hot stove once and never forget. But it's not just your mind that remembers. Your body does too. The next time you reach for the burner, your hand flinches before you even think. That's not logic. That's memory in motion. Sometimes your body reacts before your brain even joins in. You pass a place that smells like something long gone, and suddenly feel tense, a sound, a voice, a breeze, and your chest tightens. 
This isn't magic. It's your nervous system remembering without asking. These memories don't live in words. They're stored in posture, breath, heartbeat, reflex, in the way your shoulders rise when someone speaks sharply, in the way you freeze without knowing why. It's called implicit memory. No facts, no timeline, just the echo of, this felt bad. Even if your mind forgets, your body keeps the lesson. So the next time you say, I don't know why I feel this way, maybe your body does. And it's trying to keep you safe, just in case it happens again. Number four, why you sometimes know things before they happen. You walk into a room, and suddenly, you feel it. Someone's about to say your name, then it happens. A second later, just like you knew it would. Coincidence, maybe? But it keeps happening. That gut feeling right before your phone buzzes. That strange shiver before bad news. That voice in your head whispering, don't go there. People have felt this for centuries, but science? Still scratching its head. Some researchers say your brain is just super good at picking up clues. Things you don't notice on purpose. A glance, a pause, a pattern. Your brain connects the dots in the background, then drops a hunch into your awareness. Others think it's luck. You forget all the times your instincts were wrong and only remember when they're weirdly right. But then there are studies where people reacted to images before seeing them, like their bodies knew what was coming. Real? Fake? Nobody's sure yet. Until we know more, trust the feeling. And maybe listen when your gut says something's coming. Number three, why you dream of people you've never met. You wake up thinking, who is that guy? Not a friend, not a celebrity, just some random face in your dream. But here's the thing, your brain didn't invent him. Science says we can't make up new faces in dreams. Every person you see is someone you've already seen in real life, even for a second, in a hallway, on a bus, in the background of a video. Your brain keeps a huge collection of these forgotten faces. And when you dream, it pulls from that archive like casting a movie. That barista from years ago, now your dream crush. That guy who held the elevator, now chasing you through a haunted forest. Experts think your brain does this to save energy. Why build something new when it can remix the old? But no one knows why that face shows up that night. So next time a stranger appears in your dream, maybe they're not a stranger at all. Maybe your brain remembered someone you didn't. Number two, why your consciousness exists at all. Here's a strange question. Why are you you, not your body, not your brain, but the quiet watcher behind your eyes? You see, hear, think, and feel. But who's doing the seeing? Who's noticing the thoughts? What is the thing inside you that knows it exists? Science can explain how your brain works. The neurons, the wiring, the chemicals. It can track decisions and predict reactions. But it still can't explain consciousness, that feeling of being a self. Your brain could process data like a computer, but it's not the same as having experience. The I that says I am doesn't show up on a brain scan. Some scientists think it's an illusion, just a trick your brain plays to keep you sane. Others think it's the deepest layer of reality itself. There's no final answer, no button to push, no formula to solve it. And yet right now you're aware you're watching this. That awareness? That's the mystery. You're not just a body, you're you. And no one knows why. Number one, why you might not be the only you in there. You probably think you're just one person, one voice, one mind, one steady self moving through time. But your brain isn't wired like that. It doesn't have a single center calling the shots. It runs more like a committee, with different systems responsible for logic, memory, fear, reward, impulse, all constantly pushing and pulling in different directions. That's why you can crave something and fear it at the same time. Why you can break your own rules and feel like a stranger to yourself. It's not because you're weak. It's because no single version of you is always in charge. Some scientists believe we don't have one unified self, but a bundle of smaller selves that take turns steering. Most of the time, they work in sync. But when they don't, things get strange. Ever done something and thought, that wasn't me? Maybe it wasn't. And in extreme cases, this division becomes complete. Different names, voices, and memories, all inside one brain. So maybe you are you, but maybe you're also a crowd. If this stirred something in you, a thought, a memory, a question, let it out. Leave a comment. Tap like. Subscribe if you want more like this. And if someone else needs to hear it, you know what to do. We're not done thinking yet.